So recording underway. And here we go. So chapter two review. Um, I'm going to be starting on <clears throat> page 117 in your book, okay, on your, uh, in your Google Classroom, that would be uh, file number six, okay, file six. All right, and if you look at this, you can see there are different definitions that you guys should know, okay, right? Uh, biconditional, conclusion, conditional, converse, deductive reasoning, hypothesis, law of detachment, law of syllogism, paragraph proof, reflexive property, symmetric property, theorem, transitive property, truth value. All right, some of those we didn't go over, okay, and so don't worry, I won't put that on the test if we didn't go over it. However, there is right here, okay, different vocabulary practice, okay, um, and if you don't know the vocabulary, then you're going to struggle, okay, as we talked about. Now, remember, an if-then statement is conditional, all right? The part following if is the hypothesis. The part following then is the conclusion. The truth value of a conditional by determining whether it's true or false, the symbolic form of a conditional is P, if P, then Q. That's how you read that. Okay, the converse is, if you will, if Q, then P. There's the converse. Okay, biconditional is if both the conditional and the converse are both true, then you can create a biconditional, which is if and only if. Okay, uh, and, it, and that's determined by arrows going both to P and Q. All right, so... Write the converse, determine the truth value of the conditional and its converse. If they're both true, write a biconditional. All right? So it says C margin, here's margin, right? So if you're a teenager, then you are younger than 20. Okay? If, then. What would the converse be? If you're younger than 20, then you are a teenager. Now, if you're a teenager, then you're younger than 20. That's true. No matter what, if you're 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, you're younger than 20. However, the converse is not true. Okay? The converse is false. Why is that? Because if you're younger than 20, you are not necessarily a teenager. And how do you know that? You need a counterexample. For example, 10 years old. 10 is less than 20. 10 is younger than 20. 10 is not a teenager, okay? So it is not true. The converse is not true. Let's look at 12. If an angle is obtuse, then its measure is greater than 90 and less than 180, okay? That's true. If an angle is greater than 90 and less than 180, then it is an obtuse angle. Well, that also is true. So therefore, we can say an angle is obtuse if and only if, its measure is greater than 90 and less than 180. Okay, and you can see there, here's the answer. Okay, so you can test yourself in practice. All right, one moment. Yes, Emmy? It's beautiful. Why didn't you color on this one? Because that's the front. The front, you should show um, like just a little picture of you sleeping or your eyes awake and sleeping, and then maybe you get up out of your bed, and you go, and you realize that you're not alone, because you see mommy and daddy, and then you go back to sleep. Too much? What? All right, daddy's in class. All right, so let's continue. Let's see if I can pass to the next page. All right, there's the, here's the next page. All right, so this is going section by section, all right? So we're going to move on to section 2-3, all right? Because there's biconditionals, section 2-2. Two, two. We did 2-1 and 2-2, two, two. all right? Um, and let's jump into uh, deductive reasoning, law of detachment and the law of syllogism. Remember, the law of syllogism is just like the transitive property. If A, then B, then B, then C, then A equals C, right? So deductive reasoning is the process of using logic, right, 
uh, from statements to create a conclusion, okay? And the law of detachment basically says, if P then Q, right, if a conditional statement's true, its hypothesis is also true, then the conclusion is true, all right? Now, the difference of the law of detachment from just basic taking out a conditional statement is the law of detachment will give you a specific true hypothesis, okay? So, watch how it works, number 18. If you practice table tennis every day, you will become a better player. Okay? So now, they give us a specific hypothesis that's true. Lucy practices table tennis every day. So the conclusion then, also which is true, is Lucy will become a better player. Again, line L and line M are perpendicular. If two lines are perpendicular, they intersect to form right angles, okay? So therefore, lines L and M intersect to form right angles. Coming up with a conclusion because they've given us an if-then, right? If two lines are particular, they intersect to form right angles. And then they give us a statement, line L and M are perpendicular, a true statement that is specific about a situation. So therefore, you can say line L and M are uh, they intersect to form right angles. All right, the law of syllogism, right? Very similar to the transitive property, A then B, B then C. Therefore, A then C, okay? So if Kate studies, she will get good grades. If Kate gets good grades, she will graduate. So the conclusion is, if Kate studies, then she'll graduate, okay? So here is A. If we, uh, if we drew this out, we could say that this is A then B, and B, then C, so therefore A, then C. Transitive property, which is called the law of syllogism when we deal with conditional statements, okay? so. Hopefully this is not too complex, right guys? We've done conditional statements, we've done converse station statements, we've done biconditional statements. Now we've done the law of detachment, the law of syllogism, all right? And then we move on into logic in algebra, okay? Right? These are just properties that you guys learned in algebra 1, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other, and that keeps equality happy. For example, if two teams have one player on each, they're equal, right? If you add two players to one team, now you have three. If you add two players to the other team, you remain equal. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. This is properties of equality, okay? Now, the most important property of equality that you guys must master, only because you probably have already mastered addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, okay, in Algebra 1, but one that you probably practiced but didn't master is substitution. You probably know distribution, not in its entirety, okay? You probably need more practice with, with distribution property, but substitution is something that comes a little bit, um, if you will, uh, not naturally, okay? However, this right here is the simple substitution process right here. What am I doing? I am equating angle A with two times angle B, its complement. Angle A is equal or the same as two times angle B. So what can I then do? I can substitute two times angle B for angle A. So therefore, in this process, angle A plus angle B equals 90. So now I have two angle B plus angle B equals 90. Why? Because we know that angle A related to angle B is two times angle B. All right? So that is called substitution. Why? Because A and A, A and 2B are the same. So I can therefore substitute A and 2B interchangeably. Okay? Just like in sports. You put a quarterback in, same position. Different player, same position. 2B is a different player going in the same position for a measure of angle A. You must be masters of the substitution property. Whoops. 
I lost my, uh, oh, here we go. All right, sorry. All right, so there's those properties. Continuing, we learned about the reflexive, right, properties of congruence. Reflexive property, symmetric property, and transitive property. Okay, let's get a little closer, up close and personal. All right, reflexive is basically uh, given, it is, you know, uh, the question you'll have on the test is you'll have AB is congruent to AB, something like this. And I will say, what property does this exhibit? And if you can't get this right, you're not paying attention, so I don't feel bad failing you. Okay, this is me. This is me trying to give you free points so you can pass the test. Okay, and if you don't want to take my free points, then that's on you. All right, so one second, I got to take this. I'm mid lecture, what's up? I can make it. All right, symmetric property basically just says when you have one thing equaling another or congruent to another, you can use them interchangeably, okay? If AB is congruent to CD, then CD is also congruent to AB, okay? The transitive property, like the law of syllogism, if AB is congruent to CD, CD is congruent to EF, then AB then is congruent to EF, okay? And it works with angles, it works with everything. All right, this is great practice right here. Uh, you'll definitely have a question like this on the test. Fill in the reason that justifies each step. QS equals 42. Okay, very important to be able to uh, recognize what is QS. QS, from here to here is QS. All right, so this whole distance right here is 42. Now from chapter 1, the segment addition postulate, or, or sorry, we learned it in, uh, I believe we learned it in chapter one. Anyways, it could have been chapter two. Uh, chapter two has been long because we, uh, we had a break in the middle of it. Um, the segment addition postulate basically just says that this plus this equals 42. Okay? That you add two segments to equal the longer segment that makes up the two. All right, so QR, QR plus RS, RS equals 42, which is QS. Then we substitute X plus 3 plus 2X equals 42, the substitution property. Why? We substituted this value for this segment and this value for this segment. Okay, to equal 42. All right, that's the substitution property. This is simply combining like terms. X and 2X equals 3X. The 3 stays the same. There's nothing for it to uh, combine with. Equals 42. Subtract 3 from both sides. The subtraction property of equality. 3X equals 39. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. The division property of equality. X equals 13. So you could say 13 plus 3 is 16. 2 times 13 is 26. So 16 and 26 are our two, side, our two lengths. Okay? All right. Very good. Very good. So continuing on, use the property to complete each statement. Addition property of equality. If x equals 5, then x plus 3 equals what? 5 substitute, right, or put the 5 here, 5 plus 3 equals 8. The reflexive property of equality, if the measure of angle Y equals what? The measure of angle Y. Reflexive, the same thing equals the same thing. The transitive property of equality, if X equals 5 and 5 equals Y, then X equals Y. Okay? Distributive, if 3P minus 6Q equals 3, Right? Take the 3 out of both of these. We talked about this yesterday. Okay? Take 3 out of both of these, put a parenthesis outside them, and a 3 here. These cross off. 
the 6 becomes a 2, the 3 becomes a 1, 2 over 1 is 2, so you get P minus 2 outside, right? Oh, uh, sorry, the Q, forgot the Q, 2Q. There's a Q and a 2, 2Q, okay? P minus 2Q goes inside the parentheses, so it would be 3, P minus 2Q, all right? This is what's called reverse distribution, and you use the distributive property to do so. Extremely important for factoring, okay? Dis uh, division property of equality, and you can go through these. You have all of these uh, yourself, okay? All right, let's look at this next, our next section, 2-5. Prove and apply theorems about angles, okay? Find the value of y. Well, because of the um, vertical angle theorem, we can say 3y plus 20 equals 5y minus 16. Put the y's on the same side, put the numbers on the other. So you get uh, 5 minus 3 would be 2y, and you get 20 plus 16, which would be 36, so y equals 18. Okay? 2y equals 36 divided by 2. 36 divided by 2 is 18. All right, for the diagram at the left, find each of the following. The measure of AEC. AEC. Well, we just said y was 18, so 3 times 18 is 54. 54 plus 20 is 74. Boom, 74. We know that BED, my bed, or the measure of angle bed, is also 74. Why? Because they're uh, vertical angles. Okay, so AEB is a supplementary angle to either one of these. So if you did 180 minus 74, you would get AEB, which is 106. Okay? All right, here we go. Looking at the, the next one, complete the following paragraph proof. Okay? Given angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Okay? Um, prove by vertical angles theorem that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angle 4 is congruent to angle 3. Angle 1 is congruent, uh, sorry, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 is given, so angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 by the transitive property of congruent. How do you get that? Angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, okay? Um, sorry, angle 4 is congruent to angle 1. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because of the vertical angle theorem, so therefore angle uh, and angle 4 is congruent to angle 3 because of the vertical angle theorem. And therefore, by the transitive property of congruence, you can say angle uh, 4 is congruent to angle... Uh, sorry, you can say angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. All right, let's go ahead and write that down so you guys can see. I know that was probably a little bit uh, strung out in terms of... Some of you probably followed. If not, here you go. So we start off with what's given. Okay? What is given? That angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Okay? So if we started off with a uh, proof, we would say angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And this would be the statement. And this would be the reasoning. Okay? And the reasoning is, number one, it's given. So the first step, given. All right, number two. Well, we need to basically go from one to four, right? We need to be able to say one to two, two uh, three to four. So therefore, we can say uh, we have one to four. So therefore, we can say... Um, well, let's do it like this. Um, make it a little clearer. One to two, all right? Uh, so we did one to four. Um, we can do Couple ways you could do this, but we're going to do one to four, then we're going to go four to three, right? Four 
right? We're going to say 1 to 2, so therefore 2 is congruent to 3, okay? So we have 1 congruent to 4, and we can say uh, 3, sorry, 4 is congruent to 3, And how is that? Because of vertical angles, right? These are vertical angles, and these are vertical angles, okay? And then third, therefore, we can say angle two is congruent to angle three. Why? Because of the transitive property. Of congruence, all right? How do we get that? Well, if 1 is, equal to, is congruent to 4, 4 is congruent to 3, 1 is congruent to 2, so then we can say 2 is congruent to 3 by the transitive property. Okay? And that, you will have one question on your test like this where I will ask you pieces of the reasoning puzzle. Okay? Kind of like what we did up above. Alright? So you have a statement, you have reasoning, Right? You start with the given, and you need to get to what they want you to prove, which is 2 is congruent to 3, and that's what we have here. Okay? All right. Continuing on. That is section 2.5. Okay? And that leads us right into our chapter 2 test. Okay? This right here is something I'm going to leave for you guys. We're not going to do this together. This is excellent practice, okay? If I was going to give you homework tonight, right, I'm not going to collect it, but your homework would be to, um, uh, what's it called? Your homework would be to answer all of this, okay? And check it with the book. Hopefully you all have your book. If you do the book, you can then look back at this to see if you got it correct or not. Okay, so we're not going to actually go over that. Excuse me. All right, so again, the next page, uh, page 121, gives you some questions that are a little more like what you're going to get on your uh, test, which is multiple choice. What is the converse of the statement? If strawberry is red, then it is ripe. If a, if a strawberry is ripe, then it is red, okay? If a strawberry is ripe, then it is red, B is the answer, okay? Which is the intersection of two planes that have a point in common, okay? And the question, always, two planes when they intersect, okay, they intersect at a line, always, okay? Two planes always intersect on a line, all right? If they're parallel, they will have no point in common, so therefore, they will never intersect, okay? But if they have a point in common, they intersect in a line, all right? Which property justifies this statement? If 4AB equals 8CD, then AB equals 2CD, and the answer would be the division property of equality, because you divide it by 4, divide it by 4, so you got 1AB equals 2CD. A is the division property of equality. All right, so this is another way that you can practice. You can go ahead and answer all of these and then see if you got it correct or not. Some of the questions, some of the answers, unfortunately, are in the back of the book. Uh, the odd ones you can find yourself in the back of your book, uh, but if they're an even one, then uh, you're on your own. And uh, sorry about that, but there's really not too many of those, so don't worry too much about that, okay? All right, that being said... I would like to open up the floor for any uh, questions about Chapter 2 that you particularly have, maybe on a section in particular. Okay? Questions. Wow, we got a bunch of uh, all-star students right here. Masters of congruence, equality transition, transitive, uh, reasoning. All right, well, we'll see you tomorrow.
we'll see tomorrow how well you guys uh, do on that. And just before I let you guys go, let's let's just take one quick uh, moment to look at the. You know, in every test, I try and give uh, what I call easy questions, which are questions I expect everybody to be able to get, and that's that's seventy percent of the test. And then I give uh, twenty percent questions that are medium, which if you're not paying attention or you haven't done the homework or you haven't done the work, um, you're probably not going to get these. Okay, but if you are doing the homework and you're staying up on it, you should be able to get them, and that leaves you at ninety percent. And then the last ten percent are questions where um, you know, you really would have had to study and to look in order to get that last 10% to get uh, the A. And so uh, one example of where that last 10% would come from is uh, something like this. Excuse me, sorry, one second. All right, so from our digital book, Like conjunction or disjunction, but more importantly, where was it? Um, here we go. No, nope. I'll get there. Don't worry. Here we go. The inverse and the contrapositive. Okay, this is not in your book, but this is something that we talked about. Okay, we talked about the inverse and the contrapositive. All right, so this is where uh, that last ten percent, this kind of stuff, would come from. Right? So the conditional statement, if P then Q, the converse, if Q then P, the inverse is, if not P, then not Q, and the contrapositive, if not Q, then not P. So this is the negative of the conditional, and this is the negative of the converse. Okay? So therefore, uh, you've got uh, these four. All right, the bottom two, which are not in your book, but they are important and they're valuable uh, for understanding. Okay. Um, in terms of conjunction versus disjunction, this is something you should have learned long ago, um, but just reminding you, a conjunction is and. Okay. And means that you have an intersection of two statements. Disjunction is or, which is a union of two. All right, for example, if I said Rob and Luigi do number one, right, that is a conjunction because I said Rob and Luigi. In order to satisfy or to fulfill my request, both Rob and Luigi have to do number one. If I say Rob or Luigi do number one, then if Rob does it, that satisfies my request. If Luigi does it, it satisfies my request. If both of them do it, it satisfies my request. I, it is the union of the two, either one, okay? Whereas it's much more complex or it's uh, more difficult to satisfy a conjunction versus a disjunction, okay? So very important to understand. Uh, if, the way that I remember it is if you see this little V, uh, it looks more like a U. That's union, all right? That little V, also a U for union. This little one for A or and or disjunction, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, A or and or intersection, okay? So A and V, U, union, all right? Intersection versus union, all right? Again, those are the, 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 the complex problems that you would see. Tomorrow we will take a practice test for Chapter 2. And if you guys have any questions after your, test, your, your practice test tomorrow, by all means, uh, I will be available to answer those. Okay? I'm going to stop our recording.